What's up? Welcome to Backend Stuff. I'm Jacob Litzo. Today, we're moving forward to the next important function in our accounts.ex context file, the update function. This file, as you already know, holds the basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. In our previous videos, we've built and utilized a factory for generating the data needed for our tests. And we will continue to use this to, in today's video. Remember, we always need two types of data when we are working with database tables, and that's valid and invalid. As our apps continue to grow, it becomes more and more important to maintain a single source of setup data. It makes our testing process easier. And in case we need to modify a schema definition, the single source is typically the only place that needs updating. Building on what we've learned, we'll continue to use our existing factory along with the Ex Machina library. Ex Machina is a fantastic tool that simplifies the creation of test data and associations, and it integrates seamlessly with Ecto. So let's dive in and learn how to effectively test the update function in our context file. Let's open up our project, Real Deal API. And if you haven't been following along on this project, you can find the GitHub repo in the description below. And let's just go back to our accounts underscore tests.exs file. And right underneath our git account describe block, we're going to create a new describe block. And this describe block is going to be you guessed it, update account. So describe update underscore account with an arity of two. Just so you guys are familiar with what function we're concentrating on today, let's go over to our context file. And right here, you see update account. How update account works is you pass in the existing account struct and then you pass in the parameters you wish to update. So pretty straightforward. And our first test is going to be a success test. We're following the same patterns we have in the last two videos. So we're going to write a success test and an error test. So we're going to do test, and then this is going to be success, and it updates database and returns the account. Straightforward, simple description, so we know what it's doing. And the very first thing we're going to have to do is insert an account. And like we did in the last video, let's just do existing underscore account. And that equals, we can just use our factory again and do insert and then pass in our Adam account, which calls our account underscore factory function that we created in the very first CRUD video. Okay, so now we have our existing account and we want to update a piece of this account, right? Not the whole thing, just one parameter. So let's make another function with the parameters we want to update. So we're going to just call this params and our account only has the hash password and email, right? So let's just uh, return down for readability sakes. And now we're going to use our factory just to get our account struct back. So we're going to use string underscore params for, and then send in our Adam account. And now instead of just directly inserting this object, we're just getting an account object or struct back. Let's just update our email. We don't want to update our password or anything. So let's just update our email. So the only thing we need from the factory account struct that we just got returned is email. And what we can do is just pipe in and do map.take, and then we can pass in a list of keys that we want to take. And in our case, we're just taking the email out. So there we go. That, those per, that params variable right here holds a new email, okay? So now to test that our update function works, um, we're going to do an assert. And when we update, we expect an okay uh, tuple. So we expect a tuple with an okay atom and then the returned account, which is the updated account in our case. All right. And then what we're going to do is call our context file. So accounts, and now we want to do update account. And like I said, it takes our existing account that we're updating. So we can just, we pass in the whole account object and that's existing. We created that on the first line of this test. And then we want to update just the email, which we have in our params variable. 
And there we go. So now this test, this assertion test will pass as long as our pattern matches. So as long as we get an account here and an okay tuple, this test will pass. Now we want to fetch the account from the database because we want to test against, we wanna make sure that our returned account here from update matches what's in the database. So if we do, a, let's call this variable account from database, and now we can just use repo.git and pass in our account schema and then an ID from our returned account. So returned account.id. All right, so now we just fetched or queried our account struct from our database table. And now all we wanna do is make sure that the returned account from the update function, in fact, matches the account that we just pulled from our database. So let's just do assert, and this is returned account from our update function. We wanna make sure it matches the account from the database. So this will pass if it matches. We wanna do a for loop where we make sure our expected value actually equals the actual value from the database. And we've done similar things like this before, but we do need to build our expected account data. So let's make a variable called expected account data, set this equal to, and now I'm just gonna return down for readability. And we can take our existing account that we created on the first line of this test but we have to we have to make a few changes. So let's first um, do a map dot from struct, and what that does is so from struct just uh, creates a map out of a struct, so we can use our key value pairs or our key values. And then we need to pipe in the only thing that we have to change here is the existing account is no longer our updated account or account from the database because we changed the email. So we have to do map.put and we have to insert our updated email. And we can do that with Adam email. And then we can grab the params um, and grab the email right out of that and insert that into this, this map now. And that's all we have to do. And now we have our expected value. So this account data has never gone to the database, right? So it hasn't gone through update or anything. We're just taking the values we expect to be there. And now we're going to do use a for loop and just make sure that they are truly there. So if we do four and we want to pattern match and grab our field and expected value from our um, expected account data so we're looping through all the fields in our expected account data and now all we want to do is get our actual value so our actual value and we can just do map.get we want to now use our account from database struct and the current field that we're rotating through from our expected data we can just grab the value now out of our account from database and now this is a super simple test. We're just doing an assert with our actual value. So this is what the data exists in our database. And we wanna make sure it equals our expected data. So our expected data is coming from the expected account data map that we just put together here. So if this is true, if actual and expected equal each other, great. For whatever reason, if actual value doesn't equal our expected value, like we've done in the past, let's just make a nice readable error message so we can um, debug and figure out what's going on. So values did not match for field, and then we'll state what field is. I'm gonna scroll up so you guys can see what I'm doing, and then we'll put it on a new, whoop, a new line. And now we want our expected value and that will do a nice little inspect and then our expected value. And then we'll do another new line 
and then with our actual values. So we can actually see what's going on if these values are different. And then just do inspect actual. All right, there we go. So we have our nice error message. And now we can save it and let's open up our terminal and run these tests. So CD into our project, mine is in documents, develop, BS, real deal API. And let's just make sure our database is running. I keep forgetting to check that. Mine is, if yours isn't, go ahead and start it. And then mix test to run this test. And there we go, another passing test. So. We are now testing our update function from our account context file, which is pretty cool. And now just to follow our current pattern of things from the previous videos, we need to write an error test. So let's do test. And this is going, we're expecting an error to be returned. And this returns an error tuple when account can't be updated and then do end and all right what we can do here is we're going to insert an account with our factory and then we're going to create a bad parameter and the easiest one to do that for is our email so let's go ahead and do just like we did above we're going to create an existing account with our factory whoops if i can type and so factory dot insert and then we just send in the atom account which calls our account underscore factory function and now let's create some bad parameters and we can do that with just creating a map here with a key um let's see email and this value is going to be what would be a bad email um what about let's do a naive date time timestamp so that is not an email and then we'll do utc now all right so this email will not pass our change set validation requirements so now when we do an assert test we're expecting an error and we don't really care. We just care that um, the change set is here. So we're going to just pattern match to a change set struct. We don't care. Like we know it's not valid. So we're just going to now do accounts dot and call our update function. And we're going to pass in our existing account and try to update the account with bad parameters. As long as we get an error back, this test will pass. And then one more thing we want to do is we want to take existing account and fetch the existing account from the database to ensure that it wasn't updated with our bad parameters. So we're just going to do another assert and we can take our existing account, make sure it equals, and then we're going to do a repo.git, pass in our account schema so it knows what table we're querying from. And then we're going to fetch our existing account.id. So this test will pass if they still match and it will fail if they do not. If it fails, we have a problem. That means we're actually updating our account with bad parameters. And that means our update function is not working as we expect it. So let's save this and go back to our terminal and run our tests. And now we should have 15 passing tests. That's pretty cool. So for your challenge, I'd like you to create a test for the users.ex context file for the update function with Arity2, just like you learned in this video. So what did we learn today? We learned how to update values in our database table and verify that they were indeed updated or not updated if there are bad parameters. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. As always, if you need help or want to check out the solutions, check out that GitHub link in the description below. And if you have more questions or just want to hang out and chat, join my Discord server backend stuff. That link is in the description as well. If you want to learn how to build scalable production ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.